what's going on guys and welcome to the bot to build youtube channel so today we're going to be working on the gto so as you guys can see we got the uh gto up on the lift already i'm gonna i don't think we need to put the whole thing up i think we're just going to do it like that we got a uh nice aem uh oil pressure sensor came with a uh nice little sending unit and everything and then we got the uh little pod i'm not sure 100 percent if i'm going to use that one or there's a couple companies out there that are making different mounts for the uh, GTO. Um, and then I didn't want to drill and tap into the um, into the system there above the oil filter. And I didn't even know that they made these. But ICT Billet makes a whole new adapter plate. You just take your old one off, put the O-ring in there, put that on. And then it's already tapped. So you just use some thread sealer, put your sender in there, and you're good to go. And then the other thing I'm pretty pumped about, guys, is that, uh, again, I wasn't ready to buy it yet, but we've got um, ID1050X injectors in the GTO, but we're on a stock fuel pump, which we run it out when we get up into the IRPM. So we went ahead and got a uh, whole fuel pump and install kit. I didn't know, but uh, T TI or T1 Automotive, they're, they're, uh, they're wall burl now. So we got a uh, Walbro 525. Should be plenty of fuel for this thing right now. Um, should keep us going decently until we get into boost. Well guys, what we're working with, let me get the light on here. I don't know if you can see, there's a plate right up here right above the oil filter and that uh, adapter that we've got from ICT billet is supposed to hook right up to that and it gives us an oil port that we can use for our oil pressure gauge but the problem we're having is this line right here the way it routes I don't know if maybe you can see it better from up here where it routes right here it's gonna hit our plate when we try to put that uh, sensor in there. The sensor sticks out too far and it's gonna hit right here. So I'm gonna try to maybe unbolt it there and there and try to swing it down a little bit and try to get the plate in there and then maybe bend the line. It just looks really crappy, but if we break it, worst case scenario, I want to do AN fittings anyways. So, let's try to get that thing down and bent and see what happens. So we got these bolts out. I'm debating on trying to go that way and I can make like a little bracket and just move our bolts. Or if we should go in and grind that down and make it come in. But it'll really depend on which way we need this line to go. I'm thinking going in might be our best bet. I would normally just try to bend this line a little bit out of the way of the sensor, but I'm afraid if I bend it, it's gonna break. And I don't wanna do the stainless braided yet. I'd like to do the whole system when I'm ready. So I'm gonna get the sensor up in there and see which way we've gotta go. Kinda got it just mocked up in there. Obviously I gotta take the studs out and all that and put the new hardware in, but uh, I'm thinking after looking at it, my best bet might just be to make a bracket that relocates it pushed to the driver's side a little bit, like I have it. Cause then I don't have to bend anything, I don't have to cut anything, and it looks like it's gonna give us plenty of room. I can go a little more than I am right now. I just have it so it holds the sensor for me, but I think that's what we're gonna do, guys. So I went ahead and made some brackets. This one's a little thicker, but this one's gonna do the job too. Um, just got one hole in them for now. I'm gonna add another hole after when we get it in there and figure out where exactly I need it. And we will get that thing moved. Got the brackets made. They'll work. Not the prettiest things in the world, but I made them out of what I could find around. We found these little nuts or things kicking around. So I'm gonna use those. I think it's going to work pretty good and then this will bolt up this side will bolt up to the uh to where the bracket used to bolt up so 
So I'm going to try getting these things on and then I'll show you guys. Well, we got those little brackets I made in, guys. Definitely gave us so much more room over here. So now we're going to try to get that little adapter plate off. And then we'll move this back into place. Get it up here. And we will be good. I don't know if you guys can see up in there well. But on the nuts for that plate that we're putting in, it currently has studs from the factory. And the new one uses like uh, recessed Allens or beveled, whatever you want to call them. But uh, you're going to need, I used a E6 uh, inverted Torx to try to break them free. I think it takes an E5 but the E6 was enough to pop it, so you guys will need those. Sorry guys, I should have showed you this before I put the stud back in, but that stud I showed you guys, you should read the directions once in a while, I guess. I didn't read them until after, but you see how that's set for a uh, little Allen? Like this one right here. Cause it, supposed to go in and sit flush like that well it says <clears throat> that it works fits all gen 3 and 4 LS except for Pontiac GTO front sump oil pans well guess what we've got guys GTO with a front sump so what we're gonna try to do is that stud that I was talking about taking out is literally like five inches long which i thought maybe the threads oh maybe for that bolt the these threads might be bigger and there might be in there for like a different application well they're not so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the nut that came off the stud and it fits perfectly right in the top of that bezel bevel whatever you want to call it and uh we're going to try just tighten it down like that hope it seals it says it doesn't work on a GTO. I don't know if that's because of the bolts not working or is if because there's no high pressure oil there or whatever the case is. But we've already got this thread sealed, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. If the sensor picks it up, we'll run it. If it doesn't, I'll have to take this back out and apart and get a sandwich plate for by the oil filter. So Let's go ahead and try to get this thing figured out. We got the uh, sensor up in there. We got the ICT plate, adapter plate in there. I'm trying to show you guys the best I can. And you can see sensor here. We got to plug in the gauge still. Got the thread sealer. And then I ended up using the factory nuts and stud to hold that plate in. Um, like I said, it says that it doesn't work on a GTO. I don't know if it's just because their bolts won't work and they don't want you to do it this way, but it had a decent O-ring that it came with and the whole piece was actually really nice from ICT, but um, I'm just kind of trying to figure out why they say it won't work on a front sump GTO like we have. Um, it looked like a pressure side, but we're about to hook up the gauge and I'm gonna power it up with my power probe and plug it in and see if we get it a reading and hope for no leaks. Let's try it out. All right guys, so we're gonna try to jump it uh, before we wire it all into the car and everything. We're gonna use the power probe to try to power it up and make sure everything's working right. Oh, the gauge came on. It's reading zero, so that's a good sign. So let's go ahead and try starting the car. All right guys, so we're gonna start the car and check for leaks, and then we'll get the gauge working.
hook up the power to the gauge. him rev it and we'll see if it goes up with it. Perfect. Looks like it's working guys. We're getting ready to start running the wiring for the oil pressure gauge through the dash and everything. I think we're going to mount it right up here. Something like that for now. I want to get the uh, the gauge pod that goes there, like the gator pod or something like that, but I haven't been able to find one since they stopped making them. All right, guys, we got that wire through the dash. I don't know if you can see down in there. But I've got it down to the sensor, running up underneath the computer and everything, and then it comes down to there I'll show you the inside I was gonna try to show you guys as I did it but there's just too much and I was cramped under the dash here and everything so let's see you can see my hole right there I'm gonna go get a grommet for it later but then we went up, still got to tuck it in some more and get it out of the way of the brakes and stuff. But then we came up and I used this wire to hook onto it and came right through the dash with it. So now uh, we're going to try to set this plate on and mark it. And for now anyways, just use one of these generic pods that'll work and get the gauge in and then get it mounted up and then I gotta the only thing left I gotta do is tap uh, red and black on this for a switched 12 volt and then these two I'll just tie up because we're not using a standalone for now if the car ever goes to Holly we'll use those but that's in the future so for now we'll just use these two and get it buttoned up all right guys, so we got this marked how we want it. We're gonna try to pre-drill in a hole and then run the screws that they give you in. Stuff's just so brittle. Don't wanna put the screw straight in and then crack it. But we'll get that thing mounted and then get the gauge mounted up and finish getting it in the car. All right guys, we got this all fit in here. I'll show you how we did it. I used a uh, small drill bit for the screws and i ended up going with little self tappers instead of their screws because theirs were just too much and this plastic so brittle i've broken these pieces before on this car so i didn't want to take the chance so we did a self tapper and then where we're going to feed the wires through is right there we used a uh, step bit and i used to hate those things but they actually work pretty damn well so we're going to come up and instead of going through where that grommet is i think we're, we might go through where the grommet is. Depends how it lines up. But we might just go in through that slit under there. I don't know if you guys can see it. But we're just trying to keep the hole as hidden and half decent looking as possible. I might even try to get a little grommet that will fit in here. But let's go ahead and get it to the car and see if we can get it plugged in. Alright guys, so we got this marked how we want it. We're going to try to pre-drill in a hole and then run the screws that they give you in. Stuff's just so brittle. Don't want to put the screw straight in and then crack it. But we'll get that thing mounted and then get the gauge mounted up and finish getting it in the car. So we got the gauge mounted up. So only thing left now is I've got to run the wires down here for power and everything else is all set. So let's get this thing working. So I've got the wire coming through here 
uh, the wire that we need to tap, obviously. And I think what I'm going to do is I went to AutoZone and got some wire taps. I think I'm going to use this number 20 right here. No, 20 amp, I should say, not number 20. But uh, I think we're going to use that with a fuse tap and run that for our power because it's it comes on and off with the key. And uh, I'm going to use this bolt right here as a ground because as you can see with the power probe it's being a pretty good ground for us and then as you can see here it's grounded with the key off and then if we turn the key on we've got power So, I think that's what we're going to do. I went down to uh, AutoZone and got some fuse taps. Not exactly sure which one we're going to use yet. Um, I didn't bring the car with me. I should have, but I took the truck down, so I wasn't exactly sure which fuse we were going to use. I hadn't opened the fuse box in the car yet. so. But uh, I got some mini fuses, some nice heat shrink connectors, just in case I didn't have any. Wasn't sure if I did. And then I've got some uh, inline fuses too, just to be double safe, I guess. Don't want any issues with it. And then the fuse that we're going to use is actually on this panel here. Let's see. It would be that one accessory socket which I'm guessing is like the 12 volt outlet in the uh, armrest which is fine with me as long as it gets on and off with the key I didn't want to run a switch and have it look even doofier so let me uh, let me hook that up and get that wrapped up and we'll start putting the panel back on and we'll go take this thing for a ride and make sure the gauge works so we did we finished up the wiring Hold on, let me get the light here so I finished up the wiring, all I got to do is put the actual fuse tap in and put the eyelid on. But uh, just wanted to show you guys what I did here. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but back when this was just the harness that it came with the four bare wires there, we only needed a red wire for power, and it switched power, and a black wire for ground. So what I did was, it's hard to see, but you can kind of see it through the heat shrink. I folded the two wires that we weren't going to use back over this and then just put a piece of tape around it to keep one wire on this side one wire on this side so they didn't touch and then I slid some uh, heat shrink over them you can see one there and one there to uh, just hold them in place don't have to worry about them and still have it look somewhat clean you're not going to see any of this anyways but i just want it to be somewhat clean and then i did uh i needed two buck connectors here so i did um, some heat shrinked ones and then that was to connect to my wire that i wanted to extend for the eyelid for ground and then i needed to connect to our inline fuse that i wanted to put in which is actually pretty neat let me show you here it's got a it's not lit up obviously because there's a fuse in it and it's not hooked up to power but when it's hooked up to power if the fuse blows this little light right here will light up so that's kind of cool so that was a neat little factor and then we can just run our fuse tap so I'm gonna go ahead and button this up and we will check the gauge I wanted to try to clean up this hole a little bit because I decided to use this little screw for the ground just because I didn't have a uh, eyelid big enough for the bolt over there, but small enough for the wire. And I had this piece of scotch bread. I wanted to clean it up a little bit. The power probe still says it was a good ground, but I wanted to try this. I just popped a hole in the scotch bright or whatever you want to call it, and I just worked it back and forth a little bit. And we'll take it out and see if it cleaned it, which it looks like it did actually. I've oh, definitely cleaned it up a little bit. Got some bare metal there. And then as far as this guy goes, 
Oh, that's much better than it was. It was all crappy before. Cool. Found a new little trick. I just, like I said, I just popped a hole right in this and then screwed it right in. So we did, we finished up the wiring. Hold on, let me get the light here. So I finished up the wiring. All I got to do is put the actual fuse tap in and put the eyelid on. But uh, just wanted to show you guys what I did here. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but back when this was just the harness that it came with the four bare wires there, we only needed a red wire for power, and it switched power, and a black wire for ground. So what I did was, it's hard to see, but you can kind of see it through the heat shrink. I folded the two wires that we weren't going to use back over this, and then just put a piece of tape around it to keep one wire on this side, one wire on this side so they didn't touch. And then I slid some uh, heat shrink over them. You can see one there and one there to uh, just hold them in place. Don't have to worry about them and still have it look somewhat clean. You're not going to see any of this anyways, but I just want it to be somewhat clean. And then I did, uh, I needed two buck connectors here. So I did um, some heat shrinked ones. And then that was to connect to my wire that I wanted to extend for the eyelid for ground. And then I needed to connect to our inline fuse that I wanted to put in, which is actually pretty neat. Let me show you here. It's got a, it's not lit up obviously because there's a fuse in it and it's not hooked up to power. But when it's hooked up to power, if the fuse blows, this little light right here will light up. So that's kind of cool. So that was a neat little factor. And then we can just run our fuse tap. So I'm going to go ahead and button this up and we will check the gauge got everything tucked up in there pretty decent for tonight just gonna get this panel back on and then we're gonna go take this thing for a ride and make sure everything's working got this thing all in guys about to start it up Let's see what it's like to actually have some gauges in here. In my opinion, these are both gauges that this car should have came with. We've got volts down here, oil pressure up there. I've got it set so that it's below 24 or 25 PSI. I have it set so that it warns you and then if you hit the peak button over here it'll tell you the highest it's been which in my case is 51 but then as you start it I don't know if you guys seen that but I don't know if you guys seen that, but uh, as you started it, climbs right up as the pressure climbs. I was told that the uh, the old school, like uh, mechanical or hydraulic, whatever you want to call them, where you run the, run the actual uh, oil feed line all the way to it, was a lot more accurate and everything. Um, 
and the, that these were slow. I don't know if maybe just technologies came a long way or what, but this one seems, as far as I can tell, extremely accurate, and the readings are pretty quick. So, like I said, I've been pretty happy with it so far. It doesn't look as bad in the car as I thought it was going to. I honestly thought that gauge was gonna look kind of tacky or crappy or whatever, but we were able to hide that line pretty good. So I think for now anyways, what I'm gonna do is when we get ready to put this LSA on here, or if we end up deciding to go with the twin turbo route, I'm not really sure yet. We might even do one big single turbo. So, but when we get to that point, um, I think we're gonna move this one over this way a little bit and then put boost right in the center and then maybe, well, not maybe, definitely fuel pressure over here. Um, we'll definitely be doing fuel pressure soon um, as we're gonna build our own return style fuel system for this thing. Um, but yeah, so we'll have three gauges here for now and then when I can finally find or get my hands on like the gator pod or something nice that's molded in with the three gauges, I have everything we need to put these style gauges right into one of those. So everything will be set up, ready to go. Thanks for joining us today on the Bot to Build YouTube channel. Today we tried something a little different. Hope you guys liked it. Either way, make sure you're subscribed. We got a lot of cool content coming up. Uh, we're going back to Pocono uh, here in about a month. Actually, a little less than a month now. And uh, we're going to do some more roll racing out there. And we're finally going to get this thing back on the dyno here in the next two weeks. We're going to uh, turn up the boost a little bit. And then we're also going to turn the boost down afterwards and put it on pump gas see what it makes on both and have it all ready to go for race motive um, at race motive we're going to be running the 3.5 pulley so hopefully we'll have the boost up some more but like i said make sure you like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one